So this is a new idea, kind of. You remember how we started this morning uh, and throughout this course we've been saying you can take an old idea and if you express it in a new way, sometimes you gain insight or you can work with the problem in a more effective way. That's kind of what this is. Okay. So to explain what this is, the easiest way is to think back to what we just did outside. Okay. So you remember I said, look, I am the center of the universe. And I asked you all to be a certain distance all the way around me. Right? I was at, I was at the center of um, a set of points, a set of points, and you traced out a circle, right? You traced out a circle. And this isn't very important, important because this is the definition of a circle, right? A circle is. A circle is what you were doing around me, right? That's what defines a circle. A circle is, in our case, right, a set of points, a set of points, um, that are equidistant from one central point. And this was helpful because you were all literally standing around me and you were different points and there was a set of you, right? There were well, 24, 23 of you today, okay? that are equidistant from one central point. Okay, now I'm going to take this definition, right, which is a geometric definition, and I'm going to just slightly turn a little bit, same, I'm going to use much the same words, but I want to turn it just a little bit so that we can employ some of the other um, language and notation and tools that we already know to talk about circles. Okay, so instead of saying it's a set of points, Right, as in there's a whole bunch of them, right, and they're all doing the same thing. Okay, instead, I want to say a circle is rather than a set of points one, two, three, four, five, etc., all the way up to infinity. Right, I want to say it's a path. A circle is the path that's traced out by rather than a set of points, one point that moves. Okay, I'll say that again and we'll write it down. Okay? A circle is the path traced out by one point that moves according to the same idea down here that we said before, namely being equidistant from one certain place. Okay? A circle is the path traced out by one point that moves such that it's always the same distance. It's always equidistant um, from a central point. Or you could say it remains a um, a constant distance because it's not changing, right? It's a bit it's a bit tricky to use the word equidistant here because there's only one point, and you can't compare. You can't say one thing is equidistant to itself, you need two things to be equal, right? Less you. Remains the same distance from a central point. All right, so can you see, we have just very, very subtly turned this idea of a set of points, a whole bunch of them, right, to one point that moves. It's a geometric definition of the circle. Okay? Now, we're going to take this idea and we're going to apply all that we know about coordinate geometry to take this language and, and express it symbolically. Okay? So here's, here's um, what we're going to do here. Let's actually situate this in space. Okay? What would you estimate was the distance between Kashini and I in that first time that I asked you to move? Three, well, like three, three, meters, three, three meters, four oh, meters? Six. Let's call it three. Okay? So here we go. Example. Okay. <laughs> Um, because because we're establishing that I'm the center of the universe, okay? We're going to say there's a point, a point, right? But it can move, right? So its coordinates can change, right? Now we used to say, okay, you know, you've got some point and it's got coordinates here, or you've got some point and it's got coordinates here, okay? Now if its coordinates can change, we can't just put a number on those coordinates. They have to be something variable, right? So therefore, I'm going to say. There is a point, P, and I'm going to name its x coordinates and y coordinates, x and y, because they to indicate they can change, right? X, comma, y, right? 
So it's a point, but it's moving through space. That's why its coordinates are variables. Okay? There's a point P that moves. So it is always, what do we say? Something like three? Three. Three units from the origin. Okay. Now, the question that will then come is, what is, and here's the word, what is the locus of this point? What's the path that gets traced out by this point as it moves? Okay. Now, we already know what the answer is, but let's show how that is arrived at. Okay. So the question is, what is the locus of this point? Which means, you know, what's the path it traces out? What's the equation that defines all of those points? So, um, it's from the origin, right? It's from the origin. What do we usually conventionally call the origin? Zero, zero. We, we tend to, its coordinates are zero, zero. We tend to call it O for origin. Okay. So that means that the distance from P to O is three units. Do you agree with that? That's, that's kind of what this is saying, but in symbolic form, right? P O equals three. That's what it is by definition, okay? But I know how to find the distance between two points, don't I? If this is one of the points, and the other point is this, right? I just use the distance formula, right? What does the distance formula tell me if um, these are my two points? Quote it for me. PO is equal to the square root of, what's going to go into the square root? What's minus zero squared. Okay, good. You plus take the two x coordinates. Plus y minus zero squared. Y minus zero squared. So where does this come from? It comes from Pythagoras, right? And that's equal to three. Do you agree with that? Like, that's the distance, and it's always equal to three units. Okay, there's not much to this, right? Assuming there aren't tall people in your way, okay? Um, X minus zero all squared is just X squared. Y minus zero all squared is just Y squared. And then to neaten things out, I'm just gonna square both sides. Okay. These things are both positive. This is positive. This is positive. So I'm not going to add anything onto this just by saying that it's equal to 9. Okay. And this, of course, you already knew. We've met before the equation of a circle with center at the origin. Right? That's the center. And a radius, a radius, that's what this thing really is, of, well, that's 3 squared, isn't it? Okay. So you've seen this before. But you see this way of approaching it of saying there's a geometric rule that underlies this. That's where the equation comes from. 